And this actually was very interesting, the, the way how I experienced uh, Saudis, because what makes Saudi Arabia is not only um, the national transformation uh, that is taking place, the diversification of the economy, what makes Saudi Arabia is Saudis. Hello and welcome to The Mayman Show. As usual, we are coming to you from our studios in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And today we have a business transformation executive coach and CEO of Human Q Method, Maria Oida. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for your invitation. It's a pleasure to be part of your show. Yeah, well, it's a pleasure to have you and uh, glad that we can uh, finally meet and make this happen, right? Exactly. <laughs> So, you know, uh, Maria, as, as a business transformation and executive coach, uh, you know, can you tell us a little bit about what you do uh, and what services you provide executives? Sure, sure. I think before I share uh, my concept and what I do in Saudi Arabia, it would be relevant to share a little bit of my background so you will understand where I'm coming from. Okay. Um, and I mean, Belarusia. I'm from Belarus. Uh, but Belarus is post-communism country. Uh, you probably don't know what is communism on practice, but it's pretty much challenging because yes. you have to think, feel, and act in a certain way. Okay. So it's the, the procedure. And I remember my humorous grandmother used to tell me, you cannot differentiate yourself from anyone else. You are exactly the same as your friends. And uh, it was amazing. But I was always being an uh, open-minded kid. Uh, I always had my distinctive opinion on all the things. And my parents always supported that idea and encouraged, luckily and thankfully, that way uh, to be an apologetically myself, no matter cost. And uh, what happened is after graduation of university, I studied uh, criminal psychology. What I have done, I decided that's not the place where I want to be. That's not who I want to be. And I want to develop my totally new life from scratch. Okay. And I left my country in 2012 to Thailand okay. and developed my career in business development in sales in real estate. All right. So you wanted to deviate from the conformity. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. Because the entire ecosystem was um, surrounded by limiting beliefs and uh, limiting thinking. And that's not where I wanted to belong. And um, and then I went to Thailand, as I mentioned, and developed my career in a real estate, in a, a real estate sector in sales and business development. Okay. Then uh, what happened uh, when I look back to that experience... I believe there was one secret weapon behind that success, behind that journey. And this secret weapon is my violin. I played violin for seven years. I sing uh, jazz till these days and play violin. And as you know, music is one of those activities that doesn't have limitations. Music has no borders, no limits. It's pure non-linear activity. And music, one of those activities, especially string instruments like uh, uh, guitar, uh, violin, these are the instruments that help synchronization of right and left hemisphere. Basically, music helps uh, synchronization of emotion and logic. So <laughs> I'm coming from uh, a psychology background and um, violin helped me something to open up in my mind that allowed me to use my imagination to extreme. And as you know, if you use your imagination to the extreme, you don't see limitations. You see you know, only expansion. And uh, you, if you don't use your imagination, you feel insecure, you feel... Uh, uh, limit, uh, uh, you feel, feel like you have boundaries. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so when you use your imagination, you feel only uh, expansion. This is exactly how I operate till these days. Okay. If I don't get something within uh, a few days, I will work hard and I will get it. It's a matter of time, to be honest. Okay. So it, it, this is the part of my background. And uh, I came into Saudi Arabia in 2016 mm -hmm. uh, as a psychologist turned journalist. Okay. conducting economic research throughout exclusive face-to-face -face interviews with all uh, top government officials, CEOs, executives, all business uh, elite, the, the public and private sector. And being psychologist turned a journalist, 
I had this amazing opportunity, first of all, to sit down with movers and shakers of the economy, to have a conversation with them, to negotiate with them in such a level so that they can give me the best information out of my interviews. Okay. And then what happened after conducting over 600 interviews, I extracted the best information out of those conversations and created my impeccable methodology that can bring any business to a totally new level. So my methodology inspired by nonlinear nature of music and of those conversations with successful business magnets in Saudi Arabia and in Southeast Asia. Okay, so all the 600 were here in Saudi? Uh, in Saudi Arabia and in Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Saudi Arabia, uh, Dubai as well. Okay, and then we took all that information and, and developed your methodology. So what kind of curriculum, what kind of program are you currently on? So uh, what I do currently is I do business transformation coaching okay. and I do executive coaching as well. I do group workshops and as well one-on-one -on -one, uh, executive coaching. Uh, when it comes to my methodology, methodology, it also took me a while to actually um, figure out how can I pull this all together, my uh, experience in business development, in sales, my psychology background, journalism. <laughs> it's a very, uh, very diverse uh, set of skills that uh, you can collectively put together to come up with something. Exactly, exactly. It took me a while to actually also come up with the name because there is the story behind why I call it Human Q Method. The main concept of my methodology uh, is you are the person, you are in the center of this complex network and everything starts from you. If you want to change anything in your life, if you want to anything, it starts with you. You basically take responsibility for yourself, no matter for the past, for the present and for the future. You are human. It's a human cue. You are an intelligent person. You can do anything by your own. So uh, that's the major point. And, um, and the methodology is very focused 12 steps program <clears throat> that based on inside out principle. What do you mean by inside out principle? It's again, professional business transformation is impossible without personal transformation, mm -hmm. right? And if you some even look back to uh, your experience, you may notice that anytime when you move up your career ladder, it goes through personal transformation. You decided that you can do more, you deserve more, and you basically, it goes through inside out, not... I think they, my Achilles heel is also when I, you know, progresses, I, I, I tend to want to show my personal side more, but it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's my personal experience. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So, um, and that's the part of a huge part of my program that uh, first six steps, we're going through your personal transformation, which involves a lot of unpacking process. We're going through, let's say, uh, your limiting beliefs, uh, your habitual emotional states. We're going through your values that drives your behavior from the moment you woke up to the moment you fall asleep. Okay. These are very important aspects of your life. Uh, we're going through your self-image. We establish your uh, CEO brand. Uh, you, as you know, CEO branding, I mean, branding uh, in general is a very hot topic these days. No matter which position you are in, uh, you are general manager or you are a manager, you have to have a strong self-image. So after compiling all of this unpacking process and your self-image, we are going through uh, professional transformation. Also, I put a lot of accent in my program on uh, nonlinear thinking, which is creative thinking. I educate people how to think outside of the box because imagination is our greatest gift uh, that not using it, it's actually deny your true nature because we human beings, we only want spaces on earth who can actually first visualize and then bring it to reality, right? Okay. It's like architect, first he sees the building inside in his mind and then brings it to reality. Same is business, same is with you, with everyone. First we visualize something and then we bring it to reality. So imagination plays significant role in your personal and professional uh, uh, life. What, what, what sectors and organizations are you currently providing uh, executive coaching? I would say that I'm not limited to uh, particular sectors. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I work with health sectors. I work with IT sectors, which is uh, digital sectors. I work with education, uh, finance as well, many sectors. And But I would say that uh, the hottest sectors currently in Saudi Arabia is uh, fintech sector, okay. uh, technology. Of course, it's uh, the sector that drives the economy that... Um, it's a part of Vision 2030, by the way. Uh, Vision 2030, we all know, it's diversification of the economy, shift focus from oil, gas to other sectors. And so one of those is uh, is a digital IT sector. And I recently uh, been in uh, one exhibition, Black Hat Show. Okay. It was beautiful. It was amazing how many new uh, Saudi companies are uh, striving for for success. So uh, what I try to say is that, uh, yes, digital sector, uh, fintech sector, these are the hottest sectors in Saudi Arabia. And uh, I'm working with them because these are the companies who need more guidance, actually, and attention. Because going through supersonic speed, you need support and guidance. So I'm working with sectors and also, of course, individuals. Okay, and Vision 2030 is 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 basically the anchor for all these rapid and developing sectors. Exactly. Why is executive coaching, you know, important, and uh, what <laughs> value do you feel that it has to uh, basically add to executives who are working mm -hmm. to realize the kingdom's Vision 2030 projects? Oh, uh, it's a good question. Why? Because you're not the only one person who is asking me this question. Why? Uh, did I choose uh, particularly this industry and this audience? Coaching industry is a very hot industry nowadays, right? We see a lot of coaches when it comes to food, fitness, uh, executive, business, uh, business transformation. And uh, you may notice that, that let's say fitness coach, we all know how to uh, develop muscles that you need to drink one and a half liters of water per day. And you have to not combine carbs and uh, and sugar because that, uh, you know, we all know these rules. One would think that everyone knows these rules, but you'll be surprised. Not everyone knows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I see. I see. So, but in general, we know how to how to make apps. We know uh, all of this information, but why we go to one coach and we uh, don't go to another? We choose coach and the psychologist. I've been, by the way, in the side of uh, the coach and I also been on the side of the person who is going for help, right? Uh, psychological help and coaching. And I know the fact that it took me a while to choose my own coach, my uh, my expert, because despite that uh, time goes fast, we human beings, we didn't change. When the first time see the person, two questions we ask ourselves uh, instantly, can I trust you? And uh, if, uh, if uh, am I safe with you? So these are the two questions. And these are the two questions that we answer intuitively okay. with the person, either it's business or relationship. And when it comes to coaching as well, every person chose, uh, choose his own coach. And basically the person who resonates with him on a personal level. Okay. For me, <clears throat> the question is why it's uh, executive coaching because I'm on a mission. Uh, working with executives and business owners uh, in Saudi Arabia and in Southeast Asia, I know the fact that being person in business, uh, you project a powerful image. You have to be strong. People expect you to do uh, to make decision when, by the way, no one dares to make decision normally. And these are the people who um, are very much reluctant to address uh, requests. Okay. Right, it's hard to ask for help. It's uh, hard to uh, ask for guidance, okay. and uh, and it resonates with me a lot. Okay, have, have you had uh, <laughs> anyone that you've coached that? Because like the examples you're giving me are helping mm -hmm. progress and develop. Yes, you know, to take uh, <laughs> that extra step into the deep end and make decisions. Mm -hmm. Have you had people that you've coached where you've probably are coaching them to tone themselves down maybe a bit more. Yes, uh, every person is unique. I love understanding what is really going on in this person's head. This my that I'm on a mission. That's my passion to actually help the person to figure out what's actually going on. And every person is it's like Pandora box. Mm -hmm. 
every person has different, totally unique requests. Yeah. And sometimes uh, what fascinates me that sometimes the executive comes with one request. Mm -hmm. And then after two hours of session, we realize that it's not an issue at all. Okay. So it's a totally different request. You see my point? Mm -hmm. And that's why it's very important to use psychoanalysis. That's what I do in coaching. I don't use uh, purely coaching because it uh, it's a total waste of time. Right. It's like if you have uh, the scratch, it's bleeding, you put Band-Aid. Okay. But ultimately, yes, it stops the blood, but ultimately it doesn't resolve problem why the blood is actually coming out. Mm -hmm. You see, it's exactly the same in coaching. If you just purely use coaching, the skills and you um, you give into a person a certain um, new way of thinking, I don't think it's going to work because the person will probably get excited for a couple of months and then he goes back to exactly the same habitual state because we people, we habitual creatures. We program to have habits. So every case is so totally different, totally different. All right. So when you say psychoanalysis, how, how do you evaluate? Like what's, I mean, uh, in, in layman's terms, you know? When it comes to <clears throat> a group coaching workshops, it's pure coaching. Uh, my job to facilitate this dialogue between leaders uh, and come up with uh, relevant, with uh, suitable solution for everyone, right? It's a pure coaching. Uh, it's a brainstorming. Uh, no one has has time to look at the phone or anything it's amazing when it comes to one-on-one -on -one, it's a psychology it's a psychoanalysis plus coaching yeah. the experience that i have here and the conversations that we have uh, are, are extraordinary sometimes so uh, the person uncovers totally different angles right we, we don't have time to sit down by own to ask these questions you see my point mm -hmm. we're too busy for that absolutely busy we we have all the time in the world to meet uh, our colleagues to meet uh, for the interview for a meeting for important meeting but we never ha have time to meet actually ourselves mm -hmm. for just one hour and ask how are you <laughs> how is everything okay. so yeah so maria how are you i'm very good <laughs> having a great time with you <laughs> Uh, uh, you moved here in, you said 2016. Yes, right? yeah. You moved here as a, in a journalist. As a journalist. So, did, did you want, I mean, when, before you came to Saudi, uh, what, what kind of perception did you have? Uh, <laughs> I remember when we were I see. recording, you had a pretty interesting story. Why don't you let our viewers know about it a bit? Yes. That whole experience. Sure, sure. I stayed uh, before in Thailand, uh, as I mentioned, in Bangkok, uh, in real estate. Then I moved to Malaysia um, to conduct this economic research. Okay. And uh, all of a sudden, after a few months, my company is sending me to Saudi Arabia. Okay. where my first answer is no way <laughs> no way i'm not going um i wouldn't say that i had a negative perception i just never even thought coming to saudi arabia i could potentially think about other countries in the middle east but not saudi arabia that's not was not on my agenda and uh, i said sharp i'm not going to saudi arabia Luckily, I had friends, colleagues who encouraged me uh, and uh, uh, totally changed my mind. And um, uh, they didn't force me, but they pushed me to uh, to come to Saudi Arabia. And that's uh, where I am since 2016. The, at the beginning, of course, it's a journey. Imagine coming from Bangkok, from Thailand. What made you want to say, you know, like, did you feel that, you know, it just wouldn't be entertaining <clears throat> you would be bored here yes like, yes i thought it's gonna be um too um conservative uh, it's gonna be boring i read a couple of news that woman has to wear a bias and it actually was very interesting the the way how i experienced uh, saudis because what makes saudi arabia is not only um the national transformation uh, that yeah. is taking place, the diversification of the economy. What makes Saudi Arabia is Saudis. You know, the people are what makes the place. Absolutely. And I experienced that from the very beginning, from the airport. And it's actually an amazing story. I had a uh, transfer from Turkey to Riyadh for the first time I uh, flew to Riyadh. And I see the line. I was standing in a line of, of for passport control. And all of a sudden, I realized that all women are in a baya, okay. in scarf. <laughs> and I thought, I don't, and I don't have it. And 
I need to buy somewhere I buy, but there is no buy in Istanbul in Turkish airport. Mm -hmm. I started panicking, really panicking because I look around and I'm the only one person who was out of buy. Did you ask yourself, how are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep calm. So what happened? Behind my back, there was a Saudi couple. They were from Jeddah. They were amazing people. And they asked me a question, are you okay? Everything all right? I said, no. <laughs> they said, what's going on? I said, I don't have a buyer. I need a buyer. I need scarf. I feel insecure. The lady said, don't worry. She's opening her luggage, put a buyer on me, put scarf, and they stay together. Look at me. Inshallah, you're going to be Muslim. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this was in Istanbul. That was in Istanbul. It's my first experience with Saudis. I love this experience. What happened after? You know, you were also on an assignment. Imagine after Thailand moved to Riyadh. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a tough time for the first month. Yeah. Understanding those people. I was mostly alone here conducting my... I had my couple of colleagues, but still, I was totally new. Absolutely new. And uh, none of the less... Uh, after a couple of months, I realized that the people are super sweet, uh, educated, speak good English, and uh, and my journey just began. And I found a lot of friends. Now it's my second home. All right. So uh, when when you came, it was uh, you moved here, or was it for an assignment like, yeah. for a couple of months? Oh, for I would say the the first project took almost a year. Okay. Yeah, it's a long assignment. It was long project. We covered all the sectors, starting with the diplomacy, economy, finance, even green economy, energy, health, education, everything. <clears throat> it's a quite long project. I traveled in Saudi Arabia more than in my own country. I've been everywhere, you know. And this material was used. Uh, in, uh, in in your company, like well, what was the company? Became... Uh, the business year. Ah, okay. The business year. So and uh, it was very um, uh, dynamic project. Okay. Uh, we were wearing several hats. Sometimes I was uh, a journalist, editor, director, uh, HR <laughs> was researcher, uh, the trainer, uh, everything. It was super uh, fruitful project, to be honest. And it was one of the most great experiences I ever had. And then you visited different parts of Saudi. Where did you go to? Which which place uh, basically stands out the most? For you? I've been in Jeddah. I like Jeddah, of course, the beach and the relaxed uh, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, Riyadh. Uh, I've been in the Mam Hobar. Beautiful, also beautiful place. Uh, I've been even in Yambu, okay. uh, Jubail. Um, more than enough Saudi than I have. Um, different places. <laughs> you see, <laughs> yeah, Abha, Tabuk, uh, many places, and uh, Mecca, Medina as well. Uh, also totally and you know uh, even if it it is one region mm -hmm. very diverse also for instance yeah. Taif I love those mountains it's okay. beautiful this telefreak have you have you tried this I've, I've tried it the one in that not, not, uh, amazing amazing I've actually been there twice when it comes to Medina uh, people in Medina, super welcoming, super sweet. It just touch my heart, honestly, honestly. All right. And uh, my next question is derived from a typo I had on, on the question. Please. When did you fall in love with Saudi? <laughs> <laughs> when did you decide? Hey, <laughs> when did you fall in love with Saudi? I like it very persistent. When did I fall in love with Saudi Arabia? Um, Okay, I fell in love with Saudi Arabia uh, after finishing my first project, mm -hmm. uh, after understanding the nation, uh, having um, enough friends here already. By the way, I met my husband here also. I think that's where the, the love took major <laughs> place in my experience in Saudi Arabia. Right. Well, that's, 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 so, that's, so when... Well, after that, you decided to you want to stay here. So after your first project, yes, back home, or did you I want went. To stay here? I went to Indonesia to open our new project in Indonesia. Uh, it was also good, uh, very dynamic project because it was the first project for us in Indonesia. And then I uh, moved back to Saudi. I said I'm not going to go anywhere because <laughs> we had presence in uh, approximately 45 countries globally. Okay. And I said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going back to Saudi Arabia. And I came back after five months of being in Indonesia, came back to Saudi. So then I went to Dubai. Then I always 
uh, coming back to Saudi Arabia. Now I'm permanently here. Okay, since so you're a very well-traveled person, so what, what, yeah. what would you say sets Saudi Arabia apart from other parts of the world? Besides that you fell in love with it. Yeah. <laughs> but, you, know. you mean what differentiates Saudi yeah, from... It makes it different. I mean, I've, I've seen different places, and to me, different, every place has its own attitude. Yeah, of course, of yeah. course. A very, very different nation, I would say... Mm, I will tell you, uh, as I may already mentioned, people, of course, make big difference. The generosity of those people, because I think it's part of actually national identity. People are very generous. And what I mean by word generous, not only uh, giving something materialistic things or help generous in terms of everything gives you uh, support help, uh, emotion, generous in time, giving you your time. That's what really differentiates Saudi Arabia from other countries a lot, uh, generosity. I would say um, that driving the, the nation is very energetic. The nation is sync with Envision 2030. They, they are on a mission and I really like it. I like this dynamic. I feel alive here. You see, I feel that I feel this wipes this dynamic of the country, the the presence. It it makes me feel so good here. Would you say that there is passion? Absolutely, passion. of course. And women and men, it's uh, everyone is like everyone is on a mission. This is the exact environment where I feel like a fish in the water. I feel uh, I'm alive here. That's my environment. Well, the, the, the you know, like an example I can give you about when you're talking about. Saudi people in general, like, you know, so for if, if, if you're going to be invited to dinner, you know, you always see these people. Because there's a philosophy, you know, there is, if you're going to invite people to dinner, more is better than less. Of course, of <laughs> course. That's, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's one thing why you always... I would tell you, we have a lot in common. In Belarus, we also have this rule. So the guest doesn't have space to <laughs> put his plate. So, uh, and that's why it also makes me feel uh, more united. Okay, I mean, uh, it's it's interesting because a lot of the guests I talk to always give me an example. Yeah, of generosity. I've uh, also uh, trying to remember which one, but uh, they they were telling, they were comparing Saudi hospitality to Southern hospitality. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so, um, before we wrap up our interview, um, what message do you have for our? Arab news viewers watching. What message? Um, I would say that uh, striving to move forward, break through, okay. and uh, nothing in the world is uh, can replace determination and uh, persistence. Okay. Not talent. There are plenty of talented people who are unsuccessful. There are a lot of unrecognized genius people and not even knowledge because there are a lot of knowledgeable outcasts right. so the only thing is uh perseverance and determination okay so and you've answered my question as a business professional i want you to answer it as maria sure as a person. sure <laughs> um i will answer as maria okay. <laughs> so because topic of success um is on top of my mind for uh, almost every day, it's a part of my also my my true nature. <clears throat> I always was asking myself, what is key for achievement? Because there are a lot of people who uh, have all the potential, have all the resources, the right influence, uh, the right um, I would say uh, the right resources, but they cannot uh, conquer this capricious life. And there are people who have all the disadvantages, all the uh, misfavors, yet they go beyond their own expectations and achieve radical success, right? So from my standpoint, what I want to say that the key to success is not about your um, capabilities, okay. right? What human beings are capable is absolutely radical. Okay. What people can do is a totally different from what they will do. So, and my message is that uh, always stay open-minded, uh, trust, believe in yourself. No one will believe in you if you don't believe in yourself and risk, just move forward, just break through. 
All right, that's that's that's, that's a good a good message. It's always important to uh, believe in yourself and and keep going. Of course. And to quote John Cena, <laughs> "Hustle, loyalty, and respect will take you a long way." Exactly, <laughs> that's true. Right. Pleasure having you. I mean, we thank you. Talk for hours, but that's all the time we have for this episode. Tune in to our next episode of the Main Man Show. Thank you. Nice, nice to hear. Thank you so much. See you soon. <laughs>